help SMEs, small, medium-sized businesses to succeed, but where have you come from? Well, I suppose I've, I've got the kind of background that's equipped me to do that, to work with owners of small businesses. I've worked in, in corporate, I've, I was a partner in an international consulting firm running the strategy team, yeah. and then I've worked at uh, a couple of years in a very senior role at, uh, at Southern Cross. Uh, I think what I've learned the most about is really just spending the last 11, nearly 12 years doing this, working at it, practicing. Uh, and a lot of it has been about running my own business in, in the course of that. Yeah. So in a way, I'm, you know, like many researchers, I'm the subject of my own inquiry. Yeah. Uh, and some of, the, some of the things that business owners go through are the very things that I've been through, yeah. either in large corporate, smaller business, or, or in between. So what are the biggest mistakes that you see small companies making? Um, I think the biggest mistake is probably that they don't understand the importance of business development. Right. And business development I use in the context of both developing their market and developing their marketing, which is the kind of usual way we think about business development. Mm -hmm. But I have another meaning to it as well, which is developing the capability of the business. Right. And when I talk about business development, it's really about how you create tomorrow's business. And the biggest mistake that business owners make is that they are so involved in running today's business that they don't allow the time and the energy and the resource to create tomorrow's business. So they're busy doing today's job yeah. instead of working on tomorrow's business. And what we help them do is step away from that. And so how do you create that time? I can imagine a bunch of people saying, oh, I haven't got time to think about tomorrow today. Exactly. Yeah. So part of it is just about creating that time. There's only one way to get the time to do these things, and that's to make time. Carve out some space, carve out some time, especially in your head, to think about what tomorrow's business might look like. Do your job, do it well, get it done, but have this time that you create and the space that you create. And the only way to do that is to let go. Yeah. The only way to create that time and space is to let go of some of the stuff that you currently do and your people then have to let go of some of the stuff they do in order to create a kind of shared leadership. That's really the goal, mm -hmm. uh, is to create that kind of shared leadership where you and your people, you and your team are creating tomorrow's business together. Is there some chicken and egg here? I can imagine people saying, well, you know, when I get the business then I can afford to employ people, but is it that you yeah. need to employ them to get the business? Uh, I, drew a, I drew a little picture of a, of a step change and it's the idea that typically you would you know, invest in resources when you have the revenue yeah. and you just keep doing that as the revenue grows. Actually, in many cases, the reality is that you have to invest in the resources in order to get the revenue to grow. Yeah. And that necessarily involves investment. But that's business. You know, what we don't kind of talk about very much as business owners is risk upside and downside. You've, if you don't take risk, you will not get return, you will not get reward. And, and the risk you have to take in business is being prepared to invest in resources and in capability in order to drive the business. If you don't, the business stagnates. It's safe, in a sense, kind of. It's safe if it's just you or if it's just you and a few people and you kind of, you know, it's not going to go wrong. But the trade-off is you don't get to grow. And with growth comes that stability and security. It's actually more risk to stay small. Yeah. So how can you make the leap if you are a little bit risk averse? Well, I think the chicken and egg thing just, you know, it's, it's inevitably the, the just do it piece. Yeah. You know? So you've got to have the aspiration. And I suppose where we help people is helping them get clear about what it is they really want. Because there are people who just, you know, you're too risk averse yeah. to take this on. Yeah. Don't bother. Or you... You want to, you, you know, you want control too much. You don't know how to uh, move away from kind of doing it yourself in order to have control. Mm. So don't bother. Uh, you're really hopeless with people, so don't bother. <laughs> you know, if you you're not talking to me, are no, you? <laughs> no, you generically. You know, oh, you universally. You, you universally. You putting the you in universal. Yeah. So you know, there's a bunch of those kinds of things that you've got you've got to have. But in the end, you, you you've got to be willing to do it. I think it's great to have a guide and that's what we do. We provide, you know, basically a kind of a, a pilot for you in terms of how to take the business forward. There's only, you know, there are some, um, some simple rules about business and they apply to all the businesses. Yeah. You know, if they don't apply to you, you probably haven't got a business. So give us, in summary, your simplest tip that we can start doing straight away. Get rid of your D-class clients today. 
Oh, I like that. Just I was going to end it. on that, but I want to hear more. <laughs> get, ri get rid of your D-class clients. Yeah, D-class clients. So, so these are the people that uh, they either pay low or they pay slow or they give you a lot of grief. Yeah. You know, they, uh, they're difficult to deal with. Um, they're just, you know... Their phone, their ID comes up on the phone, and your staff go, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, um, I call it the sphincter clients because they are they are the ones that when when you see their ID, you sort of go, and there's a sort of puckering effect. Okay, so get rid of those. Yeah, That's, get rid of those. Evacuate those. <laughs> if you if you will, yeah. The um, a lot of people say, well, look, um, you never know. You know, some of those Ds might actually turn into A's. Yeah. And, and I say to people, look, you have to understand that statistically is very, very unlikely. You know, your D-class customers are not A-class in drag. Yeah. They are just D-class. Yeah. Get rid of them because the D stands for desperate. Okay, and it's your brilliant. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that last final tip. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks.